Hey everybody, welcome back to Leosity. This is the fifth installment. We're going to be talking about Ambly Piggid, and it's just going to be a clip show of my pet Damon Diadem and Ambly Piggid named Cadavra. The name Ambly Piggid comes from Greek, not Latin, and that's why I pronounce the G hard. A lot of people say Amblypigi and things like that. I say Ambly Piggy. It means stump rump. So I like that. And the reason being is if you look at most arachnids, their abdomens terminate in either silk glands like spinnerets or a tail, or in the case of vinegaroons, which will be the next episode, a uh, flagellum. They don't have anything there. It's just it's just a little round thing. So, and actually, interestingly enough, if you look at their abdomen and you compare it to more primitive spiders, they're very similar. And it shows just how ancient this arachnid is. I always describe it to people uh, compared to two other chalicerates. Yeah, when people want to know what they are, I say, well, imagine if a scorpion and a horseshoe crab had a baby. And uh, you can see those raptorial pedipalps in the shot, uh, very unusual and very scorpion-like. And they use that to acquire prey as well as uh, you can also see her, the most interesting thing about them, in my opinion, the antenna-like legs that they use to both locate their surroundings and, and feel around, as well as to find, corral, and draw in prey, and then they use those raptorial claws in order to seize them and start masticating them. Even though their chalicerae are more spider-like, they're, they're very fang-like, they use it mastication instead of venom to dissolve their prey. Um, and as a, as a result, it's, it's the actual feeding is more scorpion-like than uh, spider-like. You've also probably noticed that she's constantly got a roly-poly with her. They are, she's never eaten them. They are the most social of arachnids, and they normally live in tight-knit groups uh, that they use kin selection to uh, interact with each other, so they, it's, you know, siblings, parents, maybe cousins. Um, she doesn't have the benefit of having a group because I can't find any companions for her, and so she sort of, she's like the crazy cat lady, but she's got roly-polies instead that she's always with. Um, and interestingly enough, those, uh, I'm sorry if I'm a little all over the place, but I'm trying to like choreograph it with the clip show. Um, her antenna legs, those unique first legs that, that terminate in a very unusual flagella-like uh, structure, they only walk on six legs. And then they use those other two, the first legs, as sensory organs. They're also riddled with chemoceptors. So, they function the way a blind man's cane would work, because the vision is not great, as well as sort of a, uh, like a nose, the way, the way we perceive the world through olfaction, they use uh, the chemoceptors on their antenna legs for that purpose. Um, they also tend to walk side to side and backwards in a very unusual and alien and sometimes to some people uh, unsettling kind of way, which is again where the whole horseshoe crab comparison comes from, because horseshoe crabs are chalicerates, um, very closely related to the arachnids. So nothing to do uh, with crustaceans in that sense. And similarly, um, just like every arachnid except for sea spiders, and even that's become debatable, we'll, I'll cover that in another video, they use book lungs in order to respire. That's something that you'll see across the board. The ventral side has book lungs, and that's how they respire. Um, in a moment, you'll actually be able to see the book lungs, as well as her epigyne, which is, there we go. Uh, there's the epigyne and the book lungs. The book lungs are the little six divots, and the epigyne is sort of the, the slit-like organ, which, again, it, it's an indication that she's female. But the best way to actually determine whether they are male or female is the width of those petty palps. It's very easy to set family piggies based on that. You will notice that hers are, oh, actually, I'll tell you what, I'll hold off and let you watch her feed real quick. You can see her corralling it towards her uh, petty palps using that antenna leg to both locate and manipulate the prey item. You'll also see her masticating it in a moment, unlike a spider. Yeah. Anyway, um, those petty palps, the width of them is shorter than the first joint of her first walking legs. That's an indication that you're dealing with a female. The males, on the other hand, as I mentioned, they're very social. Well, the males fight for territory. There she is moping. The males fight for territory, and they use much bigger petty palps, and they, they 
pull them outwards, very similar to the way bucks do with their antlers, and they just grasp each other and sort of grapple like that, very similar, like I said, to the way bucks fight. And they do this for the same reason, for territory and the females in the territory. So generally speaking, when you see a big cluster of ambly pigs living together, um, it's juveniles, females, and one dominant male, kind of like the bull in a herd of cows. Um, yeah, that's... Let me think, is there anything else that I need to cover regarding them? Nope, that's it. Like, share, subscribe, keep asking questions. Bye.